I've been asked in the comments and I've had a few emails about these boxes I made for these uh, 110 and 130. Um, they've been really practical and it's sort of different ideas and variations on a theme. Um, the original aluminium box was, to me was too small but the limiting factor was you couldn't get anything in them. Like, you need a nice flat surface area if you want to put a pallet in. Well, you couldn't get a pallet in a Land Rover. Well, not easily. So, I wanted something that, whereas you could come in from the side and you could come in from the end, but also take all the sides off and use the maximum, like a, like a tray like you have in Australia. Uh, it worked out quite well. So, over there was Mark 1. And this was Mark 2. If I do Mark 3, I'll do something a little tiny bit different to this one. And it's not that much different, but I want to show you a few tri tips and tricks that, and mistakes I made on the first one. I corrected in this one, but I found out later that I could do something even better with this one. All right, so let's have a look Now around. I'm going to use inch dimensions for this because that's the only steel that we can get. Uh, I know you're kind of clever out there and you'll be able to work out the difference. So first of all, we use the regular Land Rover cross member. Notice that I box in the cross members now so it doesn't get muck in it. Seems to work out quite right. I got a piece of two inch by two inch angle here and welded some captive nuts on the back and use that as my datum. That was the height. Now on this one here, I went sort of a little bit bonkers. You can see I've used, well this is a better cross section of it, uh, what's that, inch and a half by three box section uh, for, for the framing. And what I did was I ran two longitudinal pieces front to back, in fact on, yeah, no that's right, on this one I used two. And what I did was I put it as close to the chassis as I could. So I want you to have a look at this little area first to see how I did it. And then we'll have a look at the front because I did something completely bonkers. I hope you can see this okay. What I did was I welded two tubes either side onto the inside of the frame to pick up the longitudinal pieces. And I didn't pick up off this cross member, but I put, some, I put a support on there uh, and th yeah that was it and then I put my supports going here now I didn't do the mud guards these are actually uh, window surrounds they work out quite uh, just the right size but I actually put them for, I spaced them equally now that was a mistake because I had some pins like this coming down and they were catching the tyre when, when that tube was there so I modified this by putting it this way now, yeah, that's, that's basically how I did it. Uh, just some tubes. So let's have a look at the Mark II and you can see how I learnt from my mistakes. Notice too, I put the filler on an angle at the back. Now I wasn't too happy with that. Um, I was stuck for somewhere to put the filler. It's worked out all right. But the problem was when you drop the um, tailgate down, when you drop the tailgate down it hits it uh, it wanted to be in a bit further if you see what I mean I could do it but then if it's too far in <coughs> excuse me <coughs> if it's too far in you have a job filling it up let's have a look at Mark 2 so on Mark 2 I did I did the same idea by bolting a, a 2 by 2 angle on the back but I reduced the size to a two inch by two inch uh, box section front to back if you can if you can see that piece there again I boxed in this so you don't get it all full of muck and of course I put mud flaps on it so it's not throwing up dirt and rotting out the rear cross member now let's have a look at the front because this is where it was completely different now you should see here something familiar this was a um, this chassis was off a, a regular, you know, so it was just a two-door van type of thing. But it had these brackets already on. Uh, you can see where the bolt on with three little screws. Well, what I did was, I used a piece of 2x2 two two onto that, 
and that is bolt this piece is bolted onto this one and it's also another bracket here which is bolted on but I had to just notch out the 2x2 two two to drop it so that the longitudinal piece would just drop onto it if you see what I mean and it's bolted onto there and this is the crucial difference this one this box here is bolted on the other one is welded on so if we want to take this box off we simply have to undo the bolts one two and the, the row across the back and it'll be fine you know and it's quite strong and again um, I use this tube in here but again on this one I just um, welded it up so because I, it was out of the way of the tire if you see what I mean and also I did away with the hook design and I put these tubes in here uh, on the other one I retrofitted them and that's to put your ratchet straps around it's really handy same at the back you've got plenty of room to put your ratchet straps I put side markers underneath I think these are a lot better than the early ones because they were too st sticky outy and you could hit them with a forklift you want them protected so that was a mistake but it looks all right it works well let's have a look around around the back so on the back all you've got is your little uh, longitudinals coming out resting on this uh, angle here and it works out really nice it's just a nice height if you see what I mean it doesn't uh... now the overhang was sort of copied off a how do we say off a 130 because if we look at the other other one over here you can see the extended tow bar for a 130s on that truck if the tow bar is too far underneath you have a hell of a job hitching well not a hell of a job but you have a time trying to hitch the trailer on because it's underneath the overhang of the box you could go longer if you wanted to but uh, it's a problem now the lights are always a problem on pickup boxes and things like this where to put them fortunately I got a piece of uh, I think it was four by four inch tubing uh, and I cut it down at angles and bolted the uh, NAS type lights onto there and they've been really nice and uh, that was on mark one idea and I just copied it over here there's bags of room to get your uh, plugs in get your hands in the back to change the bulbs etc no problems at all and I just actually welded those on and uh, they've been nice and again on this one I ran the wires over the top and into a, a central control box but on that one I went through the cross member uh, I wasn't happy with that for filling the fuel tank up on this vehicle I simply put the series 2A or 3 filler into there and uh, all the bits and pieces and then ran a pipe there's 2A so it came out of the back let's have a look so it comes out of here instead of going through the floor so instead of going down and through the floor I turned the pipe so it came out through the side and I made a sort of a bit of a this is a petrol engine so I wasn't really bothered about this and I pour a piece of tube going all the way along till it came to the fuel tank because on this one I've got a plastic fuel tank which is a little bit different mm. but it works all right you know I, I didn't have a pipe bender so I had to sort of weld bits and pieces together and it's supported by a bracket there so it's okay and it ju just to say misses on the top of the support for the spring so that's that um, it is quite an easy thing to make let me show you about the fixtures and fittings I bought all these bits and pieces these uh, anti-loose pieces and also the hinges these are little cast things and these straps I got those from the UK uh, there was a trailer company I'll try and find the link and put it below um, yeah they worked out quite nice what I did on this one <laughs> if you can see under there uh, I slipped a little rubber o-ring into over the pin because these were rattling a little bit they were a bit noisy um, let me show you one of the other mis mistakes I made on this one and compared to this one I needed to fit a screen on the end to protect the window because those are kind of expensive if they get broken and on this model originally I welded the tube 
into here that was a mistake because I couldn't lift it out uh, if I wanted to change the glass or even wash the glass I couldn't do anything with it I also incorporated a couple of little stubby ears on there so you could put ladders going across you know and so they wouldn't slide off that worked out okay it just ignore this bit because I put this bit on later otherwise I should have made it the same height um, so what I did recently I welded a piece of tube inside here and a tube inside here and I put a stainless steel bolt to push it tight so if I ever want to take this out again I simply have to disconnect the wiring undo the bolt and this piece will lift out um, also I put a couple of u-bolts uh, welded them on these are exhaust u-bolts and they work out quite well actually if you want to fasten anything down to the to the screen well you've got something now and this is one of the reasons why when I did this one this was a mistake well it wasn't a mistake really I wanted to leave an open space so you had a better view out the back windows but also you had something to fasten uh, straps around here to pull something tight but <laughs> I didn't make it so it would come out uh, but then again the box lifts off so well, I don't know uh, and I didn't put any ladder racks on the top now there was a reason why I did it like that there was a reason if we stand back you'll see oh and if you run the tailgate if you take the board off and run it through the uh, drop it down and run the car the exhaust smuts get onto the uh, woodwork no big deal but um, on both designs I made them so that the whole sides will come off and I'll show you that in a minute but notice these are I put some plastic caps in the end of these to stop water getting in but on this one I put some pins in uh, to put a hoop on so I could carry long pieces of timber now that hoop was quite heavy so I haven't put it back on when I've refurbished it and you can see where I had to cut through the metal to get the damn thing off but I've left those pins on so if I want to drop it back on again it's no big deal so let me show you how easy it is to make this into a flat deck and the reason why the reason why I wanted to make this into a flat deck and this one in particular was I had an idea in my mind that if you ever wanted to go camping you could actually buy or make uh, a, a camping module to sit on the back because you can buy them here for pickups and I thought well oh, that's only just a variation on a theme I could do that so let me show you how it works now these sides slip off I'm not going to take them off right now but I'll show you what I'm talking about You can lift the corner post out and make a nice flat deck. I'm not going to take the other side off, but just to give you the impression of what it is. So those are on pins, which will slide out, if you see what I mean. And you can take off the boards and make a flat deck. It's quite easy, really. Now, on this one here, I used treated timber. On that one, I didn't. First of all, I used plywood. Well, that was a waste of time, because it all rotted out. And I also used some just regular pine two inch board for the deck and it was at 50 millimeter or something like that and though over 10 years they rotted out so I replaced them with hemlock on that one because I had some <laughs> I had all my trees at the back we cut them down and made some board but on this one I used a treated timber deck and I screwed it down leaving in the middle some access points, so, so some regular screws, not those square-headed Robertson ones, some Phillips screws, so that uh, if I wanted to take the middle two boards out so I've got access to my fuel tank, and that's kind of important because this has obviously got uh, an injection system in it with the um, electric pump in the tank, otherwise you wouldn't have much access to it. But basically that's it, and the, once you've got the actual system it, it's quite easy uh, it's just a matter of getting everything square what I did first of all was made the part that goes across the back cross member that was easy and that's sort of your datum now here's another interesting thing you've got to work out water 
You see, when you look at this one, there's a slight, <laughs> it's not quite level, not quite. And it's so water can run off down the back. On the first one, I made it the wrong way around. Um, it went that away. However, if you've seen the videos, I put bigger springs on the front of the truck and now it's tipped it up this way. That, was, that worked out quite well so I didn't have to redesign the box. Uh, but bear that in mind, if, you, if your truck's already on a level, just make a slight incline. Just, you're only talking of a few millimetres. So the water runs this away, not that away, you know, because it is a pain because, especially when over here when it's icy, it'll all fill up with ice and then your box is pretty much useless. Also, if you can see on this one here, I retrofitted the sides again and I left a bigger gap around the bottoms. And I did leave a bigger gap around here. The other thing I did, uh, I'll take the camera off and I'll show you. When I put the boards on here, uh, obviously they've shrunk. I think I mentioned it into another video, the actual board shrunk, but they don't look too bad. Um, but I left a gap at the bottom. That's really important so that water can evaporate out and it's, these boards are not sitting in water. Uh, that's what caused my plywood to rot. Hmm, wasn't pleased about that. You can see here where I've put like Phillips type screws in there, but here they've got um, Robertson screws in, so these two boards will come out. Um, now, well, there you can see that little o-ring just sat on there and it seems to work well. Uh, when you buy these pins here, they're actually screwed uh, all the way through, the, the, like they're threaded, so they've got a nut. Well, what I did was I sort of just welded them in from the inside and then put the caps on, if you see what I mean. Actually, in hindsight, it would have been better just to weld them and then buff them off. But I welded them on the inside, and if you look, there's one just slightly above the other. But you can compensate for that by putting these, uh, these plates on at slightly different heights, so that's not really a big deal. To make the corners couldn't be simpler. Uh, all I did was get a piece of uh, square tubing and then just cut it to fit. And then that just drops on there. And, it, and I know they're a bit loose, but the, when you get the pins on, it all tightens up together. And it worked out well. Now, let's have a look at this. What would be Mark III? Mark III would be uh, aluminium. Uh, I would like to do one in aluminium, a bit lighter, save a bit of weight. But then again, it's going to cost more. Hmm, I don't know about that. We'll have to see. But I, uh, an aluminium one would be nice, but I'm just concerned about the bars and things like that. Perhaps you could make the decking out of aluminium. Not the decking, but the, uh, the framework for the top out of aluminium. I'm not sure. This seems to work okay. Um, you, you, like I said, when I put the rubber o-rings in there, that did make a difference for the rattling. You know, because they do rattle a little bit. But other than that, I mean, look, look at the area that gives you to put bits and pieces on. You can easily get a pallet in there. You know, quite easy. Works out nice. And of course, the nice thing about the boards are they're, they're easy to replace. You know, you can if you damage one or something like that, you can easily pull one off and replace them. They're quite easy to do. Uh, I might as well tell you the secret of my success of how I put these boards on. I used these uh, self-drilling bolts. Uh, you can see them perhaps better here. Uh, they're a threaded. They've got a drill tip on the end, and then they're threaded but they were far too long so what I do is I just cut them cut them down drill through these bars cut them down buff them off as flush as I can and then once this is all painted just go over it again with a bit of paint to cover over the uh, the thread the thread because otherwise they're going to be like silver dots where everywhere and they'll go rusty so that worked okay um, another good tip on this one here, I made all this bit because I didn't have any money at the time. So I just bought some flat bar, some hexagonal tube, and I bought it out to 3 eighths. 
weld and then just pad welded up here to put a pin in whereas on this side I actually bought the proper fittings these were galvanized fittings which were better however when you want to take the sides on and off it would have been better to cut one of these legs down a little bit and you'll see why here because on this side I put three bars it wasn't necessary it wasn't necessary to do that you only needed two so when I did this retrofit a few weeks ago I've kept one pin longer and cut down the other pins a bit shorter and really that makes it so much easier to get the sides on and off you know <laughs> you don't do it every day but if they're all the same length bah, you don't have to fiddle about so I didn't like that idea but I like this idea and as you can see the boxes are pretty much the same length um, I did this one a little bit deeper I did three plank on this one and on this one I did two plank it has its advantages because and disadvantages this one's a little bit higher to put things in but again it doesn't matter because you can drop the sides down but on this side it was a bit too low so if you were filling it full of gardening material etc etc then it was a little bit too low you know you couldn't really fill it up that much now I know you one of the things you're shouting out at what determines the height well uh, how can I show you this? Oh, there goes my cap. You can come round here in a minute. What determines the height of that? Oh, there it goes. It was a bit too fast. What I did to determine the height was I measured between the bump stop and the axle and the tyre and the box, and that determined the height, which was completely futile because the chances of those actually bottoming out on the on the bump stops is kind of rare and even then you could put thicker bump stops on if you really wanted but I've never had a, a, trouble, a trouble with the wheel touching up here um, this one obviously is a 130 so it's got the double coils on again and I've had a ton and a half of wood pellets on the back of there and it came nowhere near the bump stops however when you've got an increased load at the back it tends to tip up the front and well it's not very safe because the um, the tyre contact area is reduced and also the braking is reduced and the steering becomes very light and dangerous so these cars weren't made to have a massive amount of weight on the back but reasonable if you see what I mean a tonne and a half is way too much and of course a ton and a half of wood pellets was really tall so the the center of gravity was kind of high so I think that's about it really um, very much the same but a variation on a theme oh and I know what you're going to ask what's this for here what is this for well I'm going to show you so this is what it's for it was just an extension where you could put a vise on there's a bolt that clamps it into the side in this instance we've got our pipe hold down clamp a bit primitive I must admit but when we were doing plumbing and cutting threads onto some strange uh, shaped pipes this was excellent so that was it I didn't incorporate it into that one but uh, for my working truck this is brilliant because you can pull it right out and it's got a lot of strength because this piece goes <laughs> all the way through the truck and it's kind of stable neat eh? I think, I think that was on one of the electric board trucks um, so I thought I'd keep that so that's that so anyway I think that'll wrap it up uh, I've done different designs you can see the mud flap designs are kind of different the exhaust is always a problem where you put your exhaust but um, the, the window surrounds worked out quite well I'm sure you can find something somewhere um, the mud flaps are off a truck and you can see on that one I've actually put that one on backwards <laughs> with the lip going this way and then this way I've got them going this way well well so so what but they're nice and I, I on this one here I put a piece of plastic block to space it out so they wouldn't rub in the tires but on this one here I fastened it to the original mud flap bracket I had some genuine type 
uh, mud flaps on but they were hopeless they were always breaking off so I fastened it to the tube and just run it down and round and so far they've been excellent as you can see it's not kicked up any dirt underneath um, yeah so I think it could easily knock that up oh there you look there's a good example of why the these side marker lights when they're too far pronounced uh, I, I cracked that with a forklift big mistake now I've got some smaller ones for the back and they're okay but I think they're obsolete now so when you're going to buy your lights make sure you can buy replacements quite easy <laughs> yep that's it and even got a sticker on how's that so that's just a quick look round maybe a bit of inspiration I don't know and I was whilst I'm still rambling on here <laughs> What should you do your decking in? Should you do it in aluminium? Or should you do it in wood? It's a tough call. But the reason why I did it in wood is things don't slide around so much. If it's aluminium checker plate, it'll slide all over. But also, the depth of wood is just about right to make this flat. It's just an eighth or two or three millimetres, about three millimetres, higher than the wood. In ideal world it would be the same height. Um, in an ideal world what I should have done was put a filler strip underneath and just lifted it up so it was the same height. The reason is if it was aluminium you, it would be very thin and down here and then you'd have great big lips all over the place so if you want to bring things in and out with your forklift you're going to catch it. So there's pros and cons to everything isn't there? But you know, not many people do these things over here, so I, I didn't have many ideas to work off. Anyway, I know it, this has been a bit of a long video, a bit of a ramble, but uh, I hope you've picked some ideas up. All right, we'll see you later, and can you make the Land Rover better? Well, indeed, you can make it unique. See ya.